Well, guess who actually made it to midnight again, folks? Rings of Power, friends, get up! It's Wednesday night, and it is almost midnight, and we have episode five upon us. Now, I refrained from taking a nap tonight. I made that mistake last week, but not again. We strived, we made it, and I was not gonna go to sleep before this episode. I could not wait because episode five from last season was, in my opinion, banger. Best episode of this entire series, perhaps, at least season one. I think episode one of this season two here is definitely a contender for me in terms of my new favorite episode but as far as season one goes episode five is when shiz really started to hit the fan and the hype had just continued to build up into that point and then it all kind of just boiled over it really felt like a mid-season climax in a way it just was like out of the blue banger of an episode so if this is any sort of indication of how the rest of the show is going to go obviously i don't think the series has to follow the same exact formula but that said uh i still have high expectations tonight regardless even if this isn't like last season where the fifth episode is some massive just incredible work of art uh i think there's still a lot of shiz that's going to hit the fan tonight now that galadriel is back in the hands of adar and the roles are reversed and now she is his prisoner and the last we saw in season one when the tables were turned uh, Galadriel didn't exactly show Adar the most sympathy but I'm curious now that she too has been played you know that was so much of Adar's kind of victimization here this vendetta that he has against you know Sauron and he's really kind of a very tortured character in a sense you know I feel like they have some kind of mutual <laughs> been tortured souls at the hands of Sauron here and have been played by him and his mind games and all of that stuff. They've they've both been used in a sense and mentally, you know, kind of tortured and messed with in different ways, you know, at his hand. So I feel like they have that that they can bond over this time around, but also Galadriel has a juicy piece of information that she needs to share with Adar, which is that he's been played yet again. I don't know. I'm curious if he will hear her out. You know, I don't think he's in any position where he even needs to listen to her at all you know I think he would jump to the conclusion that anything she tries to say is kind of just her bartering you know for her life I don't think he would necessarily buy that she actually is trying to level with him and help him out you know are they gonna unite forces they have a common enemy here the enemy of my enemy is my friend I don't know if they're both gonna necessarily subscribe to that logic or employ it by any means coming up here as they both head into a region now but I don't know if he's necessarily in any position to hear her out or if he'll believe a word that comes out of her mouth like I said she she didn't necessarily treat him so great the last time they came face to face so however if he does hear her out and if she does divulge you know what he maybe has been suspecting all along that you know Sauron is Halbrand the king of the south that's all a sham I feel like Adar has been on edge you know a little bit here teetering and he always kind of sniffed out Halbrand and was questioning his identity from the start so I don't know if that would necessarily come as much news to him but I feel like he's deep down had suspicions all along that you know Sauron had returned I don't think he's ever had a clear conscience perhaps he has but I I think, you know, with Halbrand's, you know, appearance and whatnot and everything that's been unfolding, I do think he has some more suspicions as of late that Sauron could perhaps be back in the works, reappearing in a new form or whatnot to take revenge. So I'm hoping all of that shiz hits the fan this evening. Things are definitely heating up and just seeing all of these orcs marching into a region, like, oh my god, I'm just so, that is one thing I'm so eternally grateful for with this show when it comes to their production. The fact that they went the extra mile and have cast you know an army worth of orc extras I just it's so much more terrifying in my opinion as somebody who grew up absolutely afraid of the orcs literally haunted my childhood and still do I'm so grateful that this show went you know the route of having real humans you know costumed to look like this tangible physical reality practical you know orcs actual in the flesh the threat is really becoming real now and of course that they've dipped their toe into enemy territory you know they're behind elven lines that is just an invitation of course for all-out warfare to ensue as Galadriel points out to Elrond I think it's safe to say we are all at war now so we have T minus one minute I'm gonna refresh Amazon Prime to see if there's any way this episode has dropped but I am really freaking stoked no matter what happens tonight I think they have set this up to a very exciting point they are really saving it here for right on the dot come on you can drop it a minute early. All right, it better be out now. It's exactly midnight. It's midnight. Please, I refreshed. I've been good. I've been patient. What the frick? It's midnight, y'all. Do you see this? It's midnight. There it is. Oh, frick. Oh, no. 
<laughs> not kill a brim for in the thumbnail. Ah, frick holds of stone. Oh, shnikes, here we go. Oh. Transition, hello? Oh, those are nice. They got the fine jewels on theirs. They're talking to him already? Oh, F. Don't tell me the ring's already gonna be working some magic. What the ash? Take it, Dave. Are you explaining Delvecraft to me? This is where we are meant to dig. Now do as I say. It freaking guided him. What the? All right. Well, I was a doubter. I really questioned what the rings were gonna do for their mountain Give issues the here, but. <laughs> Father Axe. Never mind. I'll do it myself. Well, shit. Finally, some vitamin D. <laughs> Next time I order you to dig, you do so. I'm just so in disbelief. This is what's freaking me out, though. It, it, it's like speaking to them, it's like guiding them. Yeah. Yes, it's guiding them to the right place is the solutions for now, but. I feel like the more everybody realizes how well they work, the more greedy everyone's gonna become, no? Oh, now why is Tisa skeptical? But our cooperation has achieved this wonder. Behold! The doors of Durham are guarded by a password known only to friends. Mm. He seems so salty. He's sick with these pleasantries. Somebody hates small talk. Forgive me. I find it difficult to stay festive when those most affected by Mordor's rise are still suffering. That's master freaking manipulator. It is a game you play. Yeah! Read into that! Sowing seeds in others' minds and then convincing them that the fruit is of their own thought. You, you just pieced it together yourself, yes! Have you had a change of heart? Mm-hmm. We shall speak of men tomorrow. I would prefer to speak of them now. Okay, bossy pants over here. We cannot give rings to men. You are right. Follow your heart, Calibrimbar. But when the darkness falls, there are always some who rise forth. The most noble, the purest of art, from Numenor to Rune. We identify nine ring bearers. We have accomplished great things. He's like, don't push your luck. No. <sighs> He's gonna pay for that though. <laughs> we poked the bear, Frick. I'm glad he's standing his ground. He really doesn't really have any freaking choice here though. I, I want him to. Well, yep, there we go. He has no choice. Oh, motherfucker. Oh, I didn't want to go back here tonight, Frick. This is gonna just infuriate me. Every sunset serves as a reminder. Yet yeah, the domino effect has started when you usurped the dang throne. Some things will be forever withheld from our grass. The scepter is now in yours, father. The age of men is upon us, father. Let us take it. Your mother prophesied that you would come to ill ends. Huh? What did she say? Impress me in the task that I'm about to place upon you. Tell you, I failed to do so. And I shall have to find other places. You, to make use of you weird manipulator! What the frick? This is bad. That is a that is emotional blackmail manipulation. Um. Listen to them. 
Philandil tells me that in the old quarter, prayers are sent night and day for you. Glad. I'm glad some people oh, still know the truth. The Sea Guard is still loyal to me. Together we can fight. Alethia. What did you see? <laughs> what the did he did. see? Ah. I saw myself riding from the city to. I know not where. No, I. You oh. did not see it. Perhaps it's changed. That Palantir has shown me only our island's downfall. That vision was gone. Changed to a new path. Madison's kingship is a part of that path. Now! So, are you? You have asked for my command. Now it is given. No! No matter what they try and take, you must not jeopardize Numenor's new destiny. Go back to your ship, Captain. Frick, I can't believe she's actually believing that Farazhan usurping her dang throne. That eagle was not there for him, it was there for her. I can't believe though she sees that though as... Maybe she's so just crippled by the paranoia of everything she's seen in the Palantir, like, in the past, that she has she has to believe that maybe this is a sign. Dang, are people, uh, retiring? Willingly? Because they don't want to serve Farazhan? Anyone deemed loyal to the Queen region has been strict. On whose authority? On mine. Who gave you power? Oh my god! You mock that which is sacred. You were walking a treacherous path. And yours is made of seawater. Take care to keep your feet beneath you. It's a long way to the bottom. Oh, Shade, yes! Get her! She has fallen so friggin' far, I can't... The, 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 the anger that this has inflicted upon me. Captain, leaving deck! Is nobody's captain now? Shush. They have just turned into villains! I can't. Dunk on them. Finish them. Please. He's right. I'm not. Captain. Thank you, Captain. The Valar protects you. you Thank you, Captain. Thank you, Captain. Oh, oh Captain, my Captain. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Yes. The praise and respect he deserves. You, sir, on the other hand, target number one. I can have you take it off the list. You're one of my oldest friends. I think you've made it clear enough who your friends are. Get her, yes! I mean, maybe I'm grilling her too much, but she's made it clear where she freaking stands and she's relishing in all her newfound little power after being a little thief and taking the pallet, dear! I just. Well, they didn't destroy it. Where you, you freaking hypocrite! Oh, I should have known. Oh, my blood's boiling. You, yeah, touch it and see what freaking happens. See what you've done. Our armada is ready to depart. What are we waiting for? If we are to invade, we must leave now. Huh? What is? That's a pretty hard omen to ignore. Oh, run, go! Go, team, yes! I have gathered you all here today because Middle Earth is changing. Some dark will threatens all our kingdoms. My people have passed this test, and soon you shall pass it too. With the help of a power that will change everything. Seven rings, seven lords. The rings are not for you, but for your masters. <laughs> I can tell them that each of your realms may share in this bounty. Fake out. But it comes with a price. The greets already starting. They're already gatekeeping. There is gold right beneath us. Should be delving much deeper. God, he took it off for one second. He's already spiraling. F. Oh, I feel like he was not. He already was a tricky, you know, personality to be given the ring now. Stop. There's something under the mines. Disa Hertig herself. Ancient 
and powerful. You mustn't dig. You have your orders. Go, master. <laughs> Shoot, this is only going to amplify their divide, the two of them. Mm. Frick. The ring leads to greed. Greed leads to whatever the frick this is going to unleash. The Balrog. I can see it. <laughs> Every war. Every Jew. Every Balrog. Thousands of years. Disa is mistaken. <gasps> oh, this has already twisted him so much. Is he just controlling everything to deceive everyone? Ugh. Whoa! Oh, frick. It is over, y'all. I was in a place. I saw her. It was tall, and its skin was made of flames. <laughs> I think it's been here. I think it's been there among us all alone. You are with us now. There's nothing to fear. That's not much safer. No. So, Frick, maybe the elven rings aren't tainted. These ones, though, forged directly by Sauron's hand. What did you do differently? He was made by Sauron this time. So we sought to fortify the alloy by adding more Mithra. No, no. You should have. He can't resist. <laughs> Save us immeasurable hours of toil would offer this one single word. Stop! This is so unbearable! You know he can't freaking fight it! He's so tempted! Forgive me, my lord, but Jordan the Younger is arrived from Khazad Doom. No, tell him to wait. Something about the rings. <laughs> They're all malfunctioning. How do you mean changed? It's like he's called up. Jesus to share the other things, unless the dwarf lords promise him half. Greed is not his way. It never has been. Is it possible? The ring he is wearing. No. <laughs> we used the same process, but there simply cannot be a, a, a fault. Maybe it's the ring the bearer. Faults in the ring maker. Oh, or mm? what do you mean? Don't insult his expertise. God. No. What you saw, I did not wish for any of you to see until I had helped him to heal. Lord Calipu. Yes. The toll that creation has exacted from him in crafting the three and the seven has left him diminished. Oh, you freaking conniving? Promise me you will speak to none other of it, including him. Oh, he's freaking. <laughs> he's recruiting. He's turning people against. He's planting seeds. For a moment, you seem in a perfect likeness. My Lady Galadriel's, of course. Uh, is he still have an obsession? Um, does he still have a crush? Uh. Mm, they get to have their own memorial now. Come on, rally together, folks. He wants to. But he's gotta listen to Muriel and just let it happen, I guess. What now? This shrine is condemned by order of the king. This man. Live willingly or leave by force. The king sends his apologies. I. Blood boiling. It's a testament to the actors, y'all. We're ashamed of her. It's the other way around. You heard him, old man. Out. Wait, wait. Please, oh, how then? If I eliminate old Bina, give it to him, boy. He is a boy. No, he's gonna smash it or something. 
No, you. He's gonna smash it. This man is enemy number one. Oh, you are making me foam at the mouth with rage. Yes! Get him! He's such a petty child. Ugh, worth it though. You can't even throw a punch. You're gonna break your hand. <laughs> they will forgive you. Get him! This guy has never fought a day in his life. Get him! Don't- okay, wait a second. Where's all this coming from? Oh, this fricker. I hate this! This man stinks! You frickin' homicidal psycho! Do you even know how to use that? You're facing a real freaking soldier now. Look, he doesn't even need to draw a sword. He has fought orcs. That was the best bone crunch I have ever heard in my life. <sighs> He's gonna do the right thing, obviously. They're all already in deep shiz. Man. I cannot stand this. I'm actually seething right now. You stolen valor, you freaking- oh my god. You piece of literal garbage. Can we get a freaking dub, please? I went into this thinking this was about to be a hype episode. It has done nothing but raise my blood pressure. Just be mindful, someone is not manipulating you. Listen to your heart. If you're asking, you know the answer. This time we brought deceit into the process. Deceit? The letter. No, that that was you lied. No, don't pin this on you him. Lied. I confess the truth to the High King, or matters will worsen. Things have worsened. I tell you, some devilry has gone into these rings. I had hoped our estrangement would help shape you, my son. Father, I am proud of you. I am proud of you. Your desire. To partner with the elves has saved our kingdom! Or has it brought them ruin? I need your axe by my side. Oh, this timing could not be worse. He's gonna stay strong though. He's not gonna give in to all the twisting that's happening with the rings that's already deluding his father. Right? Right? Please? Please be right! Oh, God. Swear it. Swear to me that you will never wear one of those rings. Please, 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 yes. Good call, Deezer, good call. Don't tell me he already put one on! I swear it. Okay, thank God. We must atone for our mistakes. In the only way we can, by completing the rings together. Mm. And somehow redeem the seven. Redeem us all. It's too late for that. I will be with you at every turn, and any of you who offer so much as a hair's breadth less than his utmost effort is a, a smith of a regio no longer. Have I made myself plain? Yes. It starts now. Do not be discouraged. He knows how much depends on your success. <laughs> oh God, seeing him stressed. Oh. This just hurts. Everybody is collectively falling apart. Oh. 
cherry on top. Look who's at our doorstep. Motherfucker. Jesus. Forgot about this. I freaking forgot about that. High King. High King. Galadriel was right. You must send the army to Eregi on this moment. I have reason to believe that Sauron is the architect of all this. Region is the very jewel of Elven. You must send aid. Our armies cannot defeat both Adar and Sauron. Not alone. He had one bad vision and now he's freaked out. I need Galadriel to jump out and dunk on them. Put on another clinic. I know you can, girl. Well, not in chains, I guess. Frick. She has no fear. Oh, God. I was waiting for you to step in, sir. Cat like reflexes. And if me of my enemy is my friend! Go, team! Yes! Although, should we be partnering with him? He is also a homicidal. Ugh. I did go into this tonight thinking this was gonna be hype and if anything this tested my willpower so effing much. This was difficult. That was a tough one. That was maybe the hardest episode to watch just in terms of mm, my blood boiling. Hard to hard to take. We're, we're getting losses everywhere. We're desperate. We are thirsty. I'm thirsty for a dub right now. Everything has been going to shits. Everything has not been going to plan and I kind of need something to keep my hope going. Even though there's like not hope. Like I shouldn't be shocked that we're in these circumstances right now where there isn't any freaking sliver of hope. I don't think there's any room for hope at all in this equation other than my doubts have been, you know, put at ease that the elven rings are tainted in some way, shape, or form. Maybe perhaps they're not spiraling so much and not as susceptible to corruption because Sauron's hand wasn't, you know, physically tangibly there in the forging process, but the rest of these rings are fricked. So if any dub has come from this, it's I think the reassurance that I needed that the elven rings are safe, they are untainted. Sure, it might drive them to question things a little bit more. You know, Galadriel and now Gilgalad are both sharing these intense visions and bad omens and whatnot, but I think if that's the, the, the least of our worries, that that's fine. I will I will take it. So if there's anything good to come of this, it's it's that my fears have been quelled in that regard, but everything else, the can of worms is just freaking opening and it is overflowing. All of the Numenor stuff aside, I don't even know if I can touch on that, talk on that. I've said everything I have to say about that. Uh, it's pissing me off. It is making me so enraged. None of this, of course, is ever targeted towards the actors. I hope you guys would know that by now, but any critique I might have about being physically angry, <laughs> foaming at the mouth with uh, rage, my blood boiling that is never ever a reflection of how I feel about the cast or crew. If anything, you guys know I always praise, you know, when writing or a character development and character arcs, you know, when you would have met this character. When we had met Kevin in season one, if you were to tell me that he would be making my blood boil uh, this much now, T minus two years, T plus two years later, uh, I wouldn't have believed you. So that's a testament to the character arc of where he started as kind of just this more subdued, afraid to speak out, afraid to make a stand and confront his father and actually share his own ideas but now... Okay, so I did kind of forget about all the emotional manipulation and blackmailing that Farzan was weaponizing against his son, but I don't think that's an excuse. Neither is, uh, you know, seeing a Aryan compassionately touch his arm. Y you know, they're friends. She's freaking known him way freaking longer. All this is to say, maybe this slipped my mind, you know, during my fit of rage and moment of fury, but I don't see those as excuses. I can't, I cannot touch on it. I think I said everything I need to say about that, which is that it is just driving me absolutely insane. Everything is going to shiz over there. And of course, Farazana usurping the throne was just the first domino in this effect that is just causing me sheer pain to watch. I can't seeing this unfold, seeing Ellen Deal, of course, you know, strips of all his, I guess, you know, by name and power and whatnot. But of course, people still respect him and he's still looking out for Muriel and whatnot. I feel like the two of them together can still be a tag team, but she seems to 
to have lost hope as well, in spite of his best efforts to encourage her to kind of take advantage of the brewings of support that are still lingering for her, the faithful who still believe in her and would be loyal to her, you know, I think she has accepted her defeat. And if anything is reading into this as a sign that this could perhaps divert, you know, the terrible fate for Numenor that she has always feared. So it's just like, I don't think there's any hope over there. There's never been hope over there. It's gonna fall into the ocean eventually. Like, their fate is inevitable. So everything that's ha just happening leading up to that is like, ugh. so this is all to circle back and say, of course, I would hope you guys know by now, especially with this show where the cast and crew and everyone involved in the making of it has been targeted, you know, by so much unnecessary, unwarranted personal hate, personal attacks against, you know, the, the filmmakers here. If I'm expressing anger at a character that is never, ever, ever, I ever targeted at the actor and if anything, it only makes me respect the actors even more because as I was saying, you know, during the reaction, it's just a testament to them and their talent of, again, how you can introduce a character in season one and they could have this just total sheer transformation into this homicidal Mm, power hungry stolen valor that is just driving me to the brink of my sanity so that's not that is a testament to to them and their talents and they are bringing their a game and it is just transforming this show so freaking much everything's just gone to shiz so i hope i never have to disclaim that here on this channel you guys know i have nothing but respect uh for the actors especially when they can make my blood boil like that but i cannot talk about that the numenor arc i kind of just <laughs> I wasn't even over Farazhan usurping the throne, and then so much more shiz hit the fan after that, so I just wasn't prepared for any of that tonight. <laughs> I know I kind of said it, I was like, ugh, I don't want to go back to Numenor yet. I'm still reeling from, you know, Muriel's failed coronation and the, the mist omen there with the eagle that was just completely commandeered, so I'm gonna have to maybe just put that on the back burner. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to dissect that too much, but ugh, this tested me in every way, shape, and form other than, you know, aside from Numenor, every Everywhere else, the Region is falling as we speak, even though, you know, the orcs have not yet marched on it. But w I guess they still will, you know, hear this partnership now with, you know, Galadriel and <laughs> Adar that I suspected might be happening. I was curious what his intentions were, so it seems, you know, his fear, his suspicion, you know, he's sniffing out and his skepticism about Sauron and perhaps, you know, Hallbrand. Perhaps he's never trusted Hallbrand from the start. As we know, I was not sure how willing or open he would be to a a partnership here with Galadriel and the other elves and you know I think that's a tough decision for her to make now because obviously he's very disgraced uh, in many <laughs> regards but you know at, at what fault that's what's interesting about his character this kind of gray area of what choice did he have in becoming a servant of you know Morgoth and all of the turmoil and torture that he endured and he does have such a victim complex when he reflects on that and kind of remarks about it with this you know, air of it, it wasn't necessarily his his choice you know he was chosen to be this disciple and carry out all this shiz but you know in the eyes of his own kind the elves in spite of him maybe still having you know tether to that to his roots and perhaps wanting to redeem himself I don't think that's what he's necessarily looking for I think he's more so just trying to bargain here with Gladriel so that they can take down their common enemy I don't I'm not saying I think he has any interest in you know rekindling any sort of uh, redemption acceptance among his kind with the elves but this does put Galadriel in an interesting situation because it's like why would we trust you and also how does that look for me the people that she has put her faith in you know in the past it just turned out to you know backfire in her face so I'm hoping that this can be fruitful in some way you know I don't know if I'm again I don't know how I feel about Adar am I rooting for him I don't I don't I, I don't think I can morally say yes because of all the slaughtering and just brutality that he has you know employed in order to secure these lands for the orcs and whatnot his children you know but this could be an interesting turn for his character you know to align with Galadriel in order to take down this common enemy here you know I think he's mad he is is salty so I think he's looking also looking out for his own back like I think he's mad that he's been played by Halbrand and you know that Halbrand thought he could fool him but I think he's also petrified and so I'm not shocked that he's maybe pulling at straws to try to align with Galadriel because he's looking out for himself and if he can you know bolster his chances of survival against Sauron now by any means knowing that Sauron is out for his blood out for revenge so we'll see if she takes the bait now if she takes him up on it or if they have any 
any sort of trust remaining, if there ever even was any, which I don't think there was to begin with between the two of them from their first encounter. But one thing that has really become abundantly clear in this episode that is just a really tough pill to swallow is of course at the end of this, you know, at the end of the day, this is all just Sauron's orchestrations. You know, his dominion is over everything already. Everything's playing into the palm of his hand. You know, it's all been going to shiz gradually. You know, the second he came back, you know, they're all doomed in a, some way, shape or form. All of this is of course his own orchestrations. It's, it's his evil and whatnot, but the way that it is causing everybody else to spiral and in some way, shape or form, you know, kind of take on the self-induced blame and guilt you know Galadriel for example she was she was played and deceived is that any fault of her own you know I don't know I think you could make the argument that yes she had major tunnel vision but she still has taken on so much self-inflicted you know guilt and shame and you know takes it when Elrond you know throws it in her face to keep her accountable she feels it herself he can't tell her anything that she probably hasn't already you know told herself as a form of self-imposed punishment for that guilt you know now, Durin has some of it here with his father. It's like, shoot, I'm the one who freaking went to a region in the first place to hear them out about this. Now, he did try to go to his father and warn him to begin with that he felt bad omens, that he felt like this is shady. His father obviously blew that off, you know, didn't heed that in any way, shape, or form, and now here we are. But I think Durin is still feeling responsible now, like, shoot, I never should have accepted that invitation, never should have taken, you know, Celebrimbor up on that offer, because look where we are now. My dad is actively spiraling as we speak and I do think you know it's obviously worth noting that they have really emphasized just how rapidly he's kind of you know his entire character is shifting and whatnot the greed is obviously starting to you know creep in and you can see that Dern feels some sense of you know blame on himself but it's not Galadriel's fault it's not Durin's fault it's not Celebrimbor's fault he's in the same boat of you can see he's so tortured so conflicted and troubled over all of this and of course you know freaking Anatar with all his manipulations and deception is just molding this situation to spit it back in his face and pin blame on him like well maybe if you hadn't lied to your high king then of this would have been happening when it's not Celebrimbor's fault maybe you could make the argument that yeah he should have sniffed this out sooner and that you know Anatar played right into stroking his ego in order to manipulate him and so maybe if his guard had been up and he had just actually listened to Galadriel's warnings and sent him off immediately yeah you can make the argument that none of this could have happened if he had stronger resolve you know if his ego wasn't so easily tampered with. But still, at the end of this, I think that's just what's so ugh, painful to watch unfold in real time, seeing everybody just be crippled by this self-induced blame for all of the just shiz that is about to unfold for them, and knowing at the end of the day, though, it's not, ugh, is it anyone's fault other than Sauron? I think that's just what's been so painful, this episode in particular. Seeing Celebrimbor this, you know, shaken up, this just tormented right now is really just heartbreaking. But of course, all of this is only just, you know, scratching the surface of the chaos that's about to clearly ensue. I mean, we will see. It is kind of interesting that Elrond is finally snapping in and wanting to be proactive and doing something and saying, hey, we gotta get the frick to a region. Galadriel wasn't wrong. Like, maybe we should be listening to the rings, trusting these own that it's sending us these vibes that it's trying to put into the ether. Maybe we should be picking up on that, tapping into that. You know, the second Elrond kind of snaps in a little bit and has a change of heart, that's suddenly when Kilgallad is like, actually, maybe you were right, and I'm starting to believe that Sauron's hand, the Dark Lord's hand, has just been tapping into all of this and has just been devising everything under our noses, so actually, no. So now I'm curious if Galadriel does even partner with Adar, is she gonna have any backup? Is Elrond gonna just go rogue again and, you know, bring his own troops to try to intercept and save whatever is left at Eregion, which obviously I think, you know, a lost cause anyway, but we know that he has gone rogue before, you know, that would be an interesting arc for him this season at least to defy, you know, the High King in order to try to deter everybody from putting those rings on their finger, trying to spare everyone, not open that can of worms, to go from that to then perhaps he'll defy the High King now, now that he believes the ring, or at least believes Galadriel and knows that she hasn't just been manipulated all along and that her brain isn't still infiltrated by Sauron's, you know, 
hand. We'll see. I, 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 I'm nervous. I mean, I feel I need a win, and I just don't think we're gonna be getting one. It was a good episode. I mean, freaking yeah. I'm this wound up right now when I went into this, barely able to keep my eyes open. That's how you know it was a good episode. Let me know what you guys thought about this one. If your blood was equally boiled during this, if you two were foaming at the mouth, which is absolute rage. And I would be very curious to hear if you guys are on the side of, you know, Farazan and his son Kemen and Aarian and whatnot. I've seen people trying to defend them on Twitter. <laughs> So I'd be very curious to hear, you know, if you're on the other end of the aisle and you actually are, you know, siding with them and empathize with, of course, you know, where Aarian is coming from, you know, acting on her grief. I am very curious if any of you are actually, like, on Farazan's side. <laughs> So if you are team Farazan for any reason, you know, don't let me yuck your yum and tell me. Uh, I would love to actually hear why. Hopefully next week maybe has some more dubs in store. I need I need to rally after this. So I'll count you guys in episode six. Frick. We only have three left after this. It's just freaking flying by, but the stakes have been very much raised. And now I think we're poised for some epicness to go down in the next few weeks. So I'll catch you guys in that one. I'm going to go. Thank you so much for watching this one. I hope you guys are doing so well as always. And I will see you guys again very, very soon. Bye, guys. <laughs>